there was some way maybe he would be born alive. Yeah. Hey cruisers, welcome back to our channel. So this is part two of us losing our baby boy Carter story. So if you're new, make sure you hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. This is our story and we're going to continue on. So if Here you missed go. the last video, we left off at me being checked in for 30 days, what was it? 10 weeks, which we count that it was about 70 days because I had really dangerously low amniotic fluid when I went in for my 24 week appointment. So the last thing the doctor said was to be there by five. We were there at 4.30. I was waiting for my COVID test results. They came back negative. They let me in and I was finally like checked into my room by 6.30. And the nurses come and start hooking me up to monitors to monitor me and the baby. At this point, I'm just like relieved to finally be in my room. I start, you know, like unpacking little things and finally get in the bed. They start hooking me up and they're having a really hard time finding the heartbeat. So it's two nurses, you know, they're both trying and she keeps asking me, what side do you feel your baby? What side do you feel your baby? And I'm like, he's here. He's right here. Like I can feel him. And... She's putting the monitor, the monitor, she can't hear anything. She calls in a third nurse, she tries, doesn't hear anything. So finally, at this point, my heart is just like racing. Like that's like the most scary feeling. And I feel like at, in early pregnancy, it happens and it's normal because, you know, the baby was so small, they moved so much. But at 24 weeks, it's, it's not, it's not normal. Like I was literally that morning at my MFM appointment and he had a super strong heartbeat and she found it right away. So just a few hours later and they're having such a hard time finding his heartbeat. I'm immediately like, you know, like my heart is racing. I'm like freaking out. And then the doctor comes in with an ultrasound and she's looking and looking and looking. And she says, I'm so sorry but there is no heartbeat. So immediately my world just falls apart. You know, the worst thing that you could hear when you're pregnant is, you know, there is no heartbeat. And at that moment I was just crying. I, I, I almost like don't remember it. I can like hear myself crying and like, but it's like such a blur and I just immediately like start praying. Like I start talking to God. I'm just like, God, God, like that's all I can remember is just calling out to God. And you know, they're holding me and hugging me because I'm alone. Justin cannot be there with me. And the first thing I do is call him and tell him that we lost him. And receiving that call, I, I felt something was wrong, but I wasn't really in there yet. So before she called me, I was with the kids. We were going home after we dropped her off in the hospital. And, you know, she was, she, everything was good to that point. So, you know, I, I decided I needed a little bit of help. Her mom wasn't here yet. She was going to be coming, I think, the next day or something. Or not even a couple of days. Yeah, later. the Friday. This was yeah. a Wednesday. Yeah. So uh, she was coming Friday. So I was like, all right. Uh, I don't have any food at home. We didn't have any food for dinner at home. So, and it was already late. So I didn't want to start cooking or anything like that. So I went to my stepmom's house mm -hmm. slash my father's house. We went over there and, you know, I wanted to have the kids fed. So I got them ready for bed to, got them ready like to go to bed so we can go home. All this time I'm thinking, all right, well, mommy's going to be in the hospital for 10 weeks. So I had to prepare my kids for that. So then also I was gonna get help the next day um, for people to come over and help me. So, you know, I'm there just talking to my father actually. We were about to go into some business endeavors, uh, something we wanted to start up. Now, as we are going into the conversation, I get a call and I answer the phone, it's FaceTime. So I'm seeing her crying, but I'm not understanding what she's saying. So, so I'm like, babe, calm down. What, what are you saying? What, what did you say? Oh, finally she goes, we lost the baby. I went into like, to an unbelievable, like, I don't believe it, shock. Like, what do you mean? In my mind, I'm like, the 
baby was just good. Like not too long ago, the baby had a great heartbeat, everything. How could it go so fast? I'm just thinking about all the bad things. Like why this took so long? I don't understand. Why why didn't they check as soon as she got there? Just because of all this COVID thing, everything takes much longer. So finally, she's like, you're on, uh, I need you to come to the hospital. And I was like, okay. Me, my my thing, I thought I was just going to go and come back home. But um, she's like, bring a toothbrush because I'll probably sleep over the next day. So I was like, all right, cool. Uh, so I came home. I didn't even get any clothes or anything. I stayed with my same clothes on. I did change and really I wasn't prepared for what was happening so I didn't imagine it and finally I go to the hospital and I, I did do a video before that of my reaction of what happened when I heard that our baby was gone it was a really bad feeling I still to this day I don't believe it like obviously I believe it because we have his ashes and everything but I, I just, I couldn't really go through with it. My mind was like, no, the baby's going to be good when, it, when I get there. I almost had the same hope too. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the next day, the next step was to get a C-section. And I thought like there was some way maybe he would be born alive. Yeah. And so then we just had to stay there. And then she told me, all right. And we both and slept on her, the little hospital bed. Yeah, I asked her, I, I can stay here? And she was like, yeah, baby, you're going to stay here. And I was like, okay. Uh, so I guess I'll stay here the whole time. So I had um, taken some stuff out from the hospital because they were, uh, from there on, they told us that you were going to go into operation or something. Right. Well, and once you got there, in, yeah. um, it was so nice to like just you know, like hug you and like, yeah. it just felt so lonely. It was so crazy before you got there. And then the doctor, you know, told us again what was going to happen. She said she decided to wait till the next morning to do the surgery because she really wanted to wait for her partner, which is a trauma surgeon, that she always goes into these high risk C-sections with him. Like they're the ones that do the surgery together. And, you know, all the nurses and all the staff are like, you're in the best hands. People fly to this hospital from all over the country so that they can operate on them when they have a high-risk pregnancy. This is at Memorial Regional. And so in that way, I felt really safe. Yeah. But um, it was just, you know, obviously mortified at the fact that I, w I still had to have a C-section. Like, it's something that you don't think about. But women who lose their babies, you still have to deliver your baby. Whether it's vaginally, C-section, you still go through all of the changes. And I always carry really large. So I had like, it looked like I was like nine months pregnant almost yeah. <laughs> at six months. So I had to still experience everything. And it's just crazy. And we literally like, I don't even remember that night, but we slept in the hospital bed just like hugging each other. And um, we talked to the doctor because at that point I was like, I do not want more kids. Like, I don't want to go through this ever again. Like, this is the worst thing I can imagine. Please just tie my tubes. Like, if if every, like, please. And she, she said no. Yeah. And I was like really a little bit upset about that, but regardless. But, but she did give us like a good um, perspective because obviously we were emotionally hurt and we weren't thinking straight. We were like, oh no, we don't want no more kids or whatever. And she's like, no, you guys are really young. Um, you know, I know this is traumatizing for you guys, and it's not the best way you want to go through life and try to have another child. But you know, I was like, okay, yeah, I guess we can just wait a little bit. She's like, obviously, if everything's okay, you know, I'm not gonna tie your tubes. And yeah, she told me no. Yeah, she said, no, I'm not gonna tie your tubes because you guys are still young and you guys can decide that later on. So I was like, okay, so then. So then they wheel me into surgery, right? That was right before our surgeries and we like yeah. talked to her about that. Yeah, so then they, they gave us, they basically told us, all right, so we're gonna go in uh, with the potential of knowing that she has an accretor. Right, that was always a possibility. And I actually had to sign something 
that said um, you give permission to remove your uterus if you do have placenta creta and I signed it like of course if it's gonna save my life definitely Definitely. but I didn't think that I would that I would have it because hello at eight weeks I was told that I didn't yeah exactly so I really thought I didn't yeah we were were so hopeful we were like all right so yeah we're not on a ton of tubes or anything and all this time we're like yeah we're not well I mean I wanted to tie my tubes tubes, (laughs) we're like like all right but I never thought anything about my uterus I thought I was good on that yeah and just being so heartbroken, the last thing I wanted was to think of having to experience anything like that again. So that's why I didn't want, I just didn't want to do that again. But she didn't want to. And obviously God knew what he was doing because that was not even in the cards for us at all. So that's it. Um, the scariest thing I can remember of before the surgery is like a hundred different nurses come in and that's nurse anesthetist and all these people, they're talking about all the different IVs. I had an IV here, an IV here. I was gonna get one in my neck. Yeah, that was good. So many things. And then finally, thank God, she asked me if I would rather general, because I guess I was a good candidate, general anesthesia versus an epidural and being awake the whole time. And thank God I was able to get general anesthesia because it ended up being like a three hour procedure. But yeah. Up until that point, that's like the last thing I remember. So I don't know. Yeah. What do you remember after them? They started wheeling me away, and I don't know. Yeah. After that, um, I was basically stuck in the room by myself, and there was just uh, basically like, "Oh, we're gonna take her in, whatever." Unfortunately, you can't come in uh, because it's gonna be general anesthesia, so she's gonna be completely out. But if it was C-section. I was able to go in. No, if it was epidural. If it was epidural. Yeah. If like if I was gonna yeah, be yeah, awake, yeah, you yeah. were allowed to be with me. Exactly. So then they came to the decision that they wanted to just do general anesthesia and just that way they're not at risk. They don't risk anything and just go through with everything right there and then. And we were okay. We we're like, all right, fine, that's cool with us. Um, however, however. We can do it to save her life. I'm all for it. And I stayed in the room and they took her out. And then from there on, it took a little bit for uh, the doctor or anyone to come tell me anything. So in all reality, I was just in the room praying the whole time. And just, you know, praying to God that one, it wasn't a hysterectomy. And, um, oh well that it wasn't an accreta and that she didn't have to get a hysterectomy. And I was just basically praying for her to be okay. Just everything in general, just, you know, let us go home tomorrow and, you know, everything it was just, you know, we were just hoping for the best. Then we'll continue on with part three. Of what happened from of then? Of what happened from then. So this is the end of part two. Uh, we love you guys. Thank you guys for watching all this way. If you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you liked this video, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And get ready for part three of our video, which will become on the next video coming soon. So we love you guys. See you on the next video. Mm-hmm.